Yesterday, I finished up with the X570 Tai Chi review, and in the comments section, some people were raising concerns over the X570 chipset hub, and apparently there's been reports of people going out and buying these motherboards, putting them in a case, and then their whole system is shutting off, and they think it's due to the fact that the X570 chipset hub is simply overheating, and that will cause the whole system indeed to shut off. But in my review, I didn't really talk about the platform chipset hub because the noise was so inaudible compared to the CPU cooler and also the graphics card cooler that I couldn't get a proper reading on the noises. And also on that note, I thought the temperatures were fine. But here today, we're gonna to test out two different boards, the X570 Tai Chi and also the Aorus Pro, and then put a 2080 Ti on that, test it on the open air test bed, and then after that, put it inside a case and see if we can mimic some of this behavior that's being reported in the comments section. So the results now for the open air test bed on both boards, we saw a surface temperature on the heatsink coming in with the Aorus Pro Wi-Fi 52 degrees C, and then on the software readout, we got 57 degrees. Then moving over to the Tai Chi, we got 50 degrees C on the surface, and then 57 degrees on the hardware monitor temperature readout. Both times the chipset hub was warm to touch. I could easily leave my hand on there for a few hours and not have it burn whatsoever. And this is in a 24 degrees C environment. Now, first off, reasons that we use open air test beds, especially for me as a tech reviewer, it's because we've got ease of access and we can quickly have access to diagnosing problems and also visibly see all the hardware and make sure that it's running properly while we're doing our tests. Now, the main thing with an open air test bed versus a case, I've done these tests in the past and basically if you've got a good case or even a decent case with proper airflow, it will perform better for temperatures than an open air test bed scenario. Take for instance the Corsair Air 540, that's been one of my staple go-to cases and it's been out in the wild for five or six years and all you have to do is go out and buy that case and it comes pre-installed with all the fans that will give out better temperatures than having a test bed setup. But from here in, let's put the X570 Tai Chi inside the H500P which I've got ready for a transplant and then we'll also load up an NVMe PCIe Gen 4 SSD on this motherboard as well as in conjunction with the 2080 Ti and load them both out to see what kind of temperatures we can get and see if we can indeed get this board to switch off. And we just finished running tests here inside the Cooler Master H500P. We had the 2080 Ti and also a Aorus PCIe Gen 4 NVMe drive loaded up on a stress test. So this is pretty much stressing out the GPU, the NVMe drive, and the CPU too, all in one. And what we found here with the temperatures, well actually before we get into the temperatures, I'm gonna state one thing, and that's a really important thing. If you're going out and spending 300 USD or even 250 USD on an X570 motherboard, please do yourself a favor and do not cheap out on a case. You want to get a decent case with high airflow, or at least it's got the potential to have high airflow and you want to add in your own fans. Because in this case, if you've got a 2080 Ti and a high powered CPU and you're overclocking both of those, and of course you've got an NVMe drive, then you will want airflow going through that case. Otherwise things will overheat. In this case in particular, we're dumping over 300 watts into the case. So if we don't have good airflow, then things of course will overheat and they could potentially shut off. And in that case, it could be the platform chipset hub, which does that first. Now in this case, AMD have designed the platform chipset hub compared to previous two generations of X470 and X370 motherboards, where I believe they had the help of As Media in designing those chipsets. So it is a little bit different, of course, the biggest difference being PCIe Gen 4. But with that aside, let's get into the results here. So the NVMe drive, that got on that spot of the heatsink 54 degrees in both the software and on the IR temp sense. Now outside that area during the stress test, we had 50 degrees and then in the software 55 degrees. So it was running two degrees cooler 
than when it was on the open air test bed. And that's still coupled with an NVMe this time around, which we didn't run on the open air test bed. So basically if you've got a good case with good airflow, you won't have to worry about things overheating. So that noise, what you're hearing there, it's very quiet, it's very inaudible, but even then the platform chipset hub, as I said earlier, we couldn't get out an accurate reading because in this, especially now we've got uh, extra fans and the GPU was getting much louder than that platform chipset hub when we're trying to do the tests. So as it stands with this video, I simply cannot replicate the conditions to try and get this thing to switch off. And again, this is with the 2080 Ti, one of the most power consuming cards out there at the moment. And even then we still loaded up a Gen 4 NVMe SSD and the fans were still very quiet and the temperatures were very well controlled. And this leads me to believe that maybe there is a motherboard out there that could have issues. I'm just not sure, but it's definitely not the X570 Taichi nor would it be the X570 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi. And on that note, pretty much every X570 motherboard except the real high-end expensive flagship models will have the active cooling on board. Though if there were issues out there in the wild, I do believe they could be possible, but if so, I would recommend updating your BIOS straight away. Perhaps the fan might not even be turning on. There could be a bug where the software is not polling to the temperatures. And so the fan may not even be spinning up altogether. And in that case, that could cause overheating. But on that note of X570 motherboards and the platform chipset hubs thermal trip points, AMD themselves have actually left it to the motherboard manufacturers to implement their own safety thermal trip points. And from what I gather from ASUS, it's 95 degrees Celsius and ASRock is 105 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure on Aorus and also MSI's values yet, but when I find them out, I will update the description for you guys. Though when it stands to a motherboard switching off, it is of course possible to happen, especially if that fan is faulty and it's not spinning up at all, or in other cases where the motherboard manufacturer has made a mistake and the fan profiles are just simply not aggressive at all. And in other words, they don't spin up until a certain temperature. And even when they do spin up, they're just too quiet. And the platform chipset hub, the heat being dumped from a massive graphics card, NVMe drives is simply overwhelming that over time. And that could see the whole system switch off, especially if you couple that with a cheap case. But from here on in with my X570 motherboard reviews, I will be reporting on the X570 chipset hub, especially the fan noises and if it presents a problem. Basically, if you can touch that heat sink, a general rule of thumb with computers, if it's lukewarm to touch and it's not really sizzling your fingers at all, then it's nothing to worry about. But if it is getting extremely hot to the point where you touch that heat sink on any part in a computer and it's just really sizzling hot, then that's when you can start to look into it and it may present an issue or a problem. But in this situation on the Aorus Pro and also the X570, it was absolutely nothing to worry about. I could leave my hands on that thing for days and it would be getting lukewarm, which is a good thing in winter if my hands are pretty cold or if I'm playing games. You know when you're playing video games and your hands get pretty cold and you can't move them that quick, then maybe you could use your X570 chipset hub just as a little hand warmer and then get back to gaming. But the last thing to touch on before I get on out of here is the clearance between that fan and also the GPU. There may be a GPU out there that has a very low clearance and that's actually blocking off that fan completely on the chipset hub. That could be another problem. I haven't run into any of those issues. Even though this Aorus 2080 Ti is a massive card, there's still a few mil clearance so the air for the fan can still reach that platform chipset hub and not cause any problems. And if it does worry you enough uh, at least on the X570 boards here, there's three PCIe Gen 4 16X slots. So you can just move it down to a slot down the bottom. And then the chipset fan will have plenty of room to breathe. And with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. Also, let us know in the comments section below, have you had any problems or have you heard of issues with X570 motherboards? If you have, then drop them in the comment section below. And if possible, and if I've got some time, then I can investigate it for you guys. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. But if you're enjoying everything around tech, yes, city, you may wish to hit that sub button. If you haven't already, ring that bell to see the videos the moment they drop. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now, bye.